Up tonight, when is a pedophile not a pedophile? Well, when you change the language. I'm a licensed professional counselor and sex therapist in Erie, Pennsylvania. And today I wanna to talk about minor attracted persons. And I want to talk about minor attracted persons because they are probably the most vilified population of folks in our culture. And most folks are making incorrect assumptions about them without actually knowing much about them. And those assumptions create harm for an already marginalized population. You may have noticed that I'm using the term minor attracted persons, sometimes abbreviated to MAPS, instead of the more commonly used term pedophile. And I'm doing this because the term pedophile has moved from being a diagnostic label to being a judgmental, hurtful insult that we hurl at people in order to harm them or slander them. I also prefer person first language that recognizes that any label we might apply to a person is only part of who they are. No, no, no. On behalf of every parent, every auntie or uncle, every grandma or granddad, I'm going to stop you right there, lady. Shame on you, minor attracted persons. How dare you attempt to make the unacceptable acceptable? And yes, yes, there is a reason they are the most vilified in our society, because they harm children, the innocent, the most vulnerable. Let's call them exactly what they are. Disgusting, perverted, evil. Those are the words I will use. But I digress. When you artificially change the language or the meaning of words, it is nearly always to meet some obscure left-wing political agenda. Because words convey, those words convey genuine emotion, but the political left actually hates the beauty of the English language because of its richness and its diversity. The left hates it, detests it, thanks to the fluidity of our language and its emotional impact. Unlike many languages which are themselves rigid, clunky and burdensome, English soars, a living, breathing beast that can terrify or inspire, that can feed creativity and give life to our muses and our imagination which is why the left ceaselessly tries to distort and destroy meaning, to bury under a bland sludge of politically correct mumbo jumbo that deadens the soul and worse, deadens the mind. Because by and large, the left struggles to win arguments on the facts or on reason or through logic. Instead, they win their arguments through the corruption of meaning, the manipulation of language, and the grotesque distortion of words. So, a happy stay-at-home, breastfeeding mother and wife becomes an alt-right extremist, transphobic, chest-feeding, cisgender-identifying partner. You see, it's all in the language. And her beautiful, bouncing baby boy becomes an AMAB, assigned male at birth. AMAB or AFAB, meaning assigned female at birth. These are, quote, considered a more correct and inclusive version of the outdated term biological sex. Says who? Well, says this mob for starters. This is the website of the New South Wales Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. The ODPP's main role is to prosecute serious, and I stress that word serious, criminal cases in New South Wales courts, homicides, serious assaults, sexual assaults, child abuse, and so on. They have 10 officers, and lots of people work there, Crown prosecutors, solicitors, advocates, support staff, and so on. And I'm sure the salaries you and I pay them every year runs into the many millions of dollars. Well, one of those staff anonymously sent me this document dated June of this year, only a few months ago. It is the ODPP's 
Inclusive Language Guide. Remember, the job of the ODPP is to prosecute serious crimes. Well, in my opinion, a serious crime has been committed here, my lord, and that is a crime against the English language. The ODPP's website boasts all the usual guff about diversity and inclusion, working groups and respectful working relations, yada, yada, yada. Well, how about some respect for our mother tongue? Instead, we get words and meanings like brother boy, which apparently means an Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander gender diverse man who was assigned female at birth. What? My Lord, I find the ODPP guilty of willfully murdering and strangling the English language. The, English, the Inclusive Language Guide of the ODPP also patronizingly tells Crown prosecutors and their staff how to behave and how to think. Remember, these aren't naughty school kids we're talking about. These are some of the smartest and most qualified people in our community whose intellect can determine the guilt or innocence of the most serious criminals in our midst. So here, ladies and gentlemen, is what patronizing garbage our Crown prosecutors are being instructed to say and think. Quote, do not assume that everyone is heterosexual. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't, but uh, thanks for reminding me. Quote, say spouse and partner rather than husband or wife. Well, no, I prefer husband and wife. Thank you very much. Quote, don't say ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well, I just did. So what are you going to do? Send me to diversity jail for lack of inclusivity? Probably. Quote, if you are unsure of someone's pronoun, respectfully and privately ask, can I ask what pronoun you use? <laughs> if my learned colleague asks me what pronoun I use, I will respectfully ask my learned, learned colleague to take a running jump into Rushcutter's Bay. Rack off. And then, here's the clincher at the end, quote, sexual orientation and gender identity are two different constructs. If a person identifies as transgender, they may also identify their sexual orientation as straight, gay, lesbian, or bisexual. Indeed, they, they may well, I imagine. But prove it, my lord, because that's ideology and gender theory not provable. Fact. I'm being cynical, obviously, but I can't help wondering if at some point in the not too distant future, MAP or minor attracted person might wangle its way into someone's respectful and inclusive language guide.